kick back because I got another story about what went down at the legislature, something that was actually kind of controversial and um, and uh, was not. Uh, I don't think it was okay. And, and I'm going to explain to you how even the the person who drafted the bill doesn't think it's okay. Yeah, that's right. How about that? All right. So let's talk about what's up in this session. Um, now, I, uh, I'm, uh, you know, when it comes to me, I, I'm all about elections. Uh, elections matter, and how we conduct our elections matter. And so, in the special session, the governor did put on the call um, issues dealing with elections because of our health crisis. Um, we're not certain that by November, that everything's going to be fine or that we, uh, that we may not still having to be restricted in our movements. Um, and we don't know, right? So while they were dealing with the budget and the, the impact that COVID and, other, and oil prices and other things had on our budget where we had to um, refigure some of the figures to make everything balanced because that is the law in this land um, for the state of New Mexico, uh, other things got taken up. And so... Uh, an election bill came through. Now it was it was Senate Bill Four, and the election bill um, was uh, mainly about dealing with um, the COVID health crisis and possibly having an all mail out um, ballot for November, so that we're not uh, risk putting people at risk for um, cont- uh, getting uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, because of us standing in line and actually even more so than us standing in line is the election workers who become exposed to everyone who comes through that polling place. Um, and they're actually the ones probably at the biggest risk of getting uh, contaminated with COVID-19 if we have uh, as many people as we normally have uh, voting on election day. So Senate Bill 4 was made to deal with that and try to create the all mail in ballot option and and then there was some argument about whether that was okay or not or whether you know we like that or not and it was completely um, it was completely I think germane to to what was going on uh, dealing with uh, COVID and its um, and its factors uh, and by the way there was there were some other things put on the call like dealing with policing because it, it was clear that something needed to start happening now and I, I in no way think that the bills that were passed were the end of the game, but they were at least some uh, s- distinct, uh, measurable things that uh, that were passed by the legislature that uh, were needed, had been needed for a long time. And so, um, and I think that was an emergency, and mainly because there are people that are very upset about this. This has sparked a lot of protests a- around the country, and people are just done, and they, they need action. And so I think the legislature felt that and did a few things. But when it came to this election bill, they were also dealing with it on the health issue. But then something else happened. Dead man walking, Senator John Sapien puts in uh, an amendment on the floor of the state Senate where this bill had gone through a committee and there were some tweaks that were made in the bill in the committee. But down on the floor, Senator Sapien, um, who was like the main sponsor of this bill, although there were there were also co-sponsors, and I'll get to that in a second, he put on a floor amendment that basically uh, did what was called a same-day registration bill. Same-day registration bill means that if someone's not registered to vote, they can come in, register to vote. This is for the primaries. They could come in, register to vote right there at the polling site, and then they could then get a ballot and vote, right? That sounds fantastic. Like, uh, more people have a shot if they forgot or whatever that they could that they could um, vote. In concept, this is good. Um, Why it was not put in also for the general election, uh, I guess maybe because we're doing an all mail-in ballot, so you same-day registration, I guess, goes out the window. There were two things I had a problem with on this. One is how it was marketed. It was marketed as a step towards open primaries. But in my opinion, it's the opposite of open primaries because in the bill, you can't just register how you want. If it's truly an open primary, you could be registered however you wanted. 
and then you could grab the either the Democrat or the Republican or the Libertarian ballot and and vote in that particular primary. But no, they said you can re-register to vote if you are a registered DTS independent, meaning you have no party or a minor party that's not recognized, um, not one that's not part of the primaries, not a major party. You could then do that, and you could re-register as one of the major parties. And then you could vote in that party's primary. So what this is doing is as opposed to opening everything up, it's channeling down all of the voters into their neat little corrals. Um, corrals that many of the people don't want to be in, but are now going to be, you know, still being forced to to do. So to me, it is not um, it's not even as advertised. It's not opening up. It's it's uh, it's it's funneling. And it's not okay. Um, and there, in the Senate, it passed, the floor amendment passed with almost no opposition. It got to the House, and actually, it, there was a big row. And one of the big rows was just that, is this really something we need to be dealing with right now in this emergency session? Um, and I actually have you know some agreement with them. I've worked on open primaries and, and election changes uh, legislation for many years um, during the regular sessions. I'm not sure, you know, and for a lot of this, this subject matter for many legislators takes a lot of time and consideration. They're so used to doing elections the way they're used to doing it that they usually have five million questions. So, um, so anyway, this is, um, you know, this was the article in the, the journal from Dan McKay. And there's that giant if. So New Mexico would open its primary elections to independent voters if they agree to register with a political party. So they'll open it up if you agree to close yourself. Um, and then uh, there's John Sapien quoting, you know, his thing about a small step towards uh, open elections. Um, and then he said, what we're doing here is more of a compromise, Sapien said, not a fully open primary system because it's not it's a closed system with a same day registration it's not open at all um, Senator Sandra Rue Republican from Albuquerque said it's something that we've been kicking around for a long time and um, Senator Daniel Ivy Soto uh, Daniel Ivy Soto an Albuquerque Democrat and co-sponsor of the bill said the legislation represented the collaboration of senators on both sides of the aisle this bill, I think, is a good balance, he said. A good balance or bipartisanship, the word that I'm you know, beginning to loathe, at least in this current system where the only uh, place in the middle is between the conservative Democrats and the even more conservative Republicans, or between you know, two oligarchic parties making some kind of compromise. Um, so this is Senator Daniel Ivy Soto. Senator Daniel Ivy Soto, I've known him forever. I, I mean, I knew him when he was going to law school, um, half the reason he lives in this state. Um, and uh, Senator Daniel Ivy Soto has become somewhat of the elections law expert in our state. Um, and, um, and, and with some good you know, reason. He's, he's into it. He's always been into it. I think that's why he and I connected long ago because we were into elections, how they run, how they operate, how they're supposed to go. But um, unfortunately, he's also uh, a party man all the way, Democratic party man all the way. And in 2019, the Democratic National Committee set down uh, reforms that they wanted passed. And this closed same-day registration uh, uh, thing was was definitely on the list and it didn't happen last year now it's getting snuck in here um, I want to uh, bring in something that Senator Ivy Soto may have forgotten that is that uh, a year ago when open elections uh, open primaries was being uh, tried for like the third time we were trying to get um, we were trying to get that bill passed and and we were having um, we were having problems with it uh, and, and it, it got I would say a little bit heated in the Senate Rules Committee 
the uh, bill, our, our open primaries bill that Mark Moore's, uh, Senator Mark Moore's had uh, put up was just constantly not being heard. It, it was it was dropped somewhere in the middle of the session and then just sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there and there was just zero action uh, taken on it. Finally, in the closing days of the 2019 um, election, we get uh, we get a hearing on it, and by that time, um, the hearing uh, was a substitute bill that Senator Ivy Soto basically had um, uh, put into existence. And uh, so then he starts talking about what the problems are with the open primaries bill as existed. The open primaries bill was a, a bill uh, at the time that was basically saying that major parties have to allow independents and minor parties to be a part of the um, of their uh, of their primary process. Um, and one of the biggest arguments towards this was that because primaries are taxpayer funded elections, then taxpayers need to have access to an election that they're paying for. Um, and uh, and uh, Senator Ivy Soto um, had a uh, had a a reply to that. He had an answer um, to that that I think is really important for everyone to hear. And now I've, I've got it here, so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up and have you hear it. Now um, I'm gonna try to raise the volume as much as I can. Um, it's he he in this video he speaks really fast. Um, and so I may have to, uh, I may have to, um, uh, you know, start and stop here just so that you can, uh, so I can explain what's going on. Senator Ivy Soto is sitting one person to the, uh, to the, like to the, as we see it, to the right of the New Mexico um, uh, state symbol there. So here we go. Here's his response when he's changing Mark Moore's bill. Um, which is going to be a bill that will say that parties can decide on their own if they want to have independents or minors in or not or what. Heard, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Rules Committee, uh, many bills relating to uh, primary elections and uh, including having uh, people come and tell us the, their theory of the law, which sometimes happens to be the exact same theory that was just rejected by the state Supreme Court. Um, oh, now, what that's about is there was, uh, there have been lawsuits with the Supreme Court of the state of New Mexico about some of these issues. Uh, Supreme Court is, has rejected um, several of the arguments. Now, I don't know if the taxpayer one has actually fully ever gone to the Supreme Court. There were some different uh, lawsuits that had come forth, um, and the Supreme Court uh, never accepted, I mean, they listened to one or two of them, but never voted in favor. This is, uh, um, uh, there is an increasing number of, of people who decline to select a political party uh, and uh, decline to affiliate. However, there are some significant legal issues uh, associated with uh, primary, uh, the political primary process. The polit political primary process really is part, uh, it's, it's a nomination for a private association which is subsidized by the state. The reason why the state subsidizes it, which was just found to be constitutional by the state of New Mexico when they rejected the latest lawsuit that was uh, um, uh, impetuously filed by, by uh, zealots who don't actually want to pay attention to what the law really says. Hey, zealots who don't want to pay attention to what the law really says. Hey, well, I'm proud to be a zealot then, along with uh, some of the lawyers that uh, were working on this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, he's got to get that zing in, and that's fine. That's his right. Um, he still hasn't quite gotten to the explanation, but it's coming. And uh, um, is, is the reason why it's publicly funded is to provide accountability to the public in terms of who the nominees of major parties are. So it's to make people accountable to the public from a public, publicly funded you know, election that not all the public uh, can get, you know, be a part of. However, uh, New Mexico engages right now in a, in a state policy of mandating by state law that those primaries be closed. Okay, so that's what we've got now. 
We have a law that tells the parties that for primaries, it's a closed system. If you're with a major, a major party, which right now are the Democrats, Republicans, or Libertarians, the only people who can participate in your primary voting are from those parties for that ballot. And, and it is mandated in the state code. That's what he's saying, and that's the truth. That's what we're under right now. Now listen to what he has to say about that. Uh, to anybody other than members of that state political party. I have long believed that given the right challenge, and the right challenge has not been made, given the right challenge, that is unconstitutional. That system, the system we have right now, according to a learned legal expert in election law in the state of New Mexico, he says is unconstitutional. And if the right challenge was brought before the Supreme Court, this closed system would fall. It is unconstitutional for the state of New Mexico to tell a political party that the party may not associate with non-party members if the party wants to associate with non-party members. But by the same token, I also believe it is unconstitutional for the legislature to tell political parties that they shall associate with non-party members if the political party does not want to associate with non-party members. And the current system is resulting in litigation that there is a significant expense to us uh, um, defending. If we were to mandate openness in the, and, 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 and where we would decide the scope of openness, that would also result in litigation that we would be uh, 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 required to defend uh, to the tune of several hundreds of thousands of dollars, which could be used in a better way. So he's just laid it out in 2019. He's saying that the closed primary system we have now, because we're being parties are being mandated to only allow certain people to vote in their primaries, is unconstitutional. But a completely open system where the state says you cannot restrict people from from uh, voting in your primary that are registered voters, that that's also unconstitutional. His solution uh, with his Senate uh, um, was that state parties could, could of their own accord, uh, have a vote and voluntarily say, this is how we will run ours. There are states that do that, where, where one party is uh, saying, we'll be open, and another party says, we won't, we'll be closed, but it's their choice. So that's the framework behind like part of what I'm having a problem with with Senate Bill 4 with this amendment by the way remember I'm not saying that Senate Bill 4 as a whole is bad the stuff dealing with uh, the the health crisis and and possible all mail and ballot I think that that was a good uh, forward thinking by the legislature but this this thing although it's you know in general it's just adding to the closed primary system. And you're basically adding more unconstitutional process to an unconstitutional thing already. He knows better. He knows that he is just adding more law into a, what he calls an unconstitutional system. I actually think, as a member of the bar of the state of New Mexico, that's a little problematic to be, you know, to have the uh, the honor and the responsibility of creating law for the state of New Mexico that you know for a fact is possibly is unconstitutional or is adding more unconstitutionality to an already unconstitutional system. Not only that, but it basically it it's a bill that says that independents, uh, minor party, unrecognized parties can do this process on election day. Well, I don't think that's equal protection under the law. I think Democrats, Republicans, and Libertarians should also be able on election day to re-register. So if they wanted to re-register as Democrats or Libertarians or Republicans and, and vote in that primary, they should. This should be something for all voters. Creating um, this asymmetry like that for a process is, uh, I believe, not equal protection under the law. So even even the the bill they put forward itself is, in my opinion, you know, of this unlearned zealot's opinion who's been dealing with election law from the outside for thirty years is unconstitutional, and I think Daniel Ivy Soda needs to you know check himself, uh, you know, or other people need to take a second look or be a little extra careful when you lean on him too hard about election law and changes 
because he's right. He, I think that he is very learned in this in this subject matter. And when it comes to technical details, like creating a new process for all mail in ballot or other things, he just did a fifty year bill cleanup that mainly had no partisan stuff in it. it was all technicalities. He, he's a wizard, and he was amazing, and he and he was good at that kind of stuff. So he's knowledgeable. But he also carries water for the Democratic Party. And if the Democratic Party says, go and do something you know is unconstitutional, he's like, yes, sir, Mr. Perez, you got it. I'm your water boy. And I just, you know, this, this, this has to stop. So there you go. Fake open primaries. Don't let the newspapers fool you. Don't let those senators fool you. Thank you, lame duck sapien on your way out the door for contributing to that um and this has been the duopoly report um have a good day and uh please uh make sure you like uh, subscribe and please share this video as well